So hi there folks, it's me Smotown, and today we're going to be looking at another Dark Souls 3 lore video, but we're going to be looking at an area of the lore that doesn't have much evidence in game, but nonetheless manages to be one of the most tantalising and intriguing areas of lore in the game. I'm talking about the angelic faith of Lothric, and its central figure, Gertrude. I will show that although there isn't a huge amount of lore in the game about this area, if you pull it apart, we can get drawn into a very intriguing subject. In addition, I will highlight the lore which I believe highlights that there were tensions between the adherents of this religion and the institution of Lothric, which was comprised of the three pillars. I believe this tension resulted in the angelic faith being forced underground and it even escalated to conflict between the adherents of the angelic faith and the knights of Lothric. Finally, I will finish on my speculation as to why the faith was persecuted to such an extent by the three pillars. But with that being said, let us begin our analysis. A good place to start is to look at Gertrude herself, for she seems to be the central figure and possibly even the source of the angelic faith. The Miracle Divine Pillars of Light is a good source for this, for it states, Miracle of Gertrude, the Heavenly Daughter brings down multiple pillars of light in the vicinity. The Queen's holy maiden Gertrude was visited by an angel who revealed this tale to her. Despite losing both her sight and voice, she was determined to record the tale. Ordinary men cannot decipher her fragmentary scroll, nor comprehend how it became the foundation of the angelic faith of Lothric. We can therefore see that Gertrude is known as the Heavenly Daughter, and that she was a maiden of the Queen. This suggests that she was some kind of attendant to the Queen of Lothric. She is most likely known as the Heavenly Daughter, because she was visited by a Heavenly Visitor, an angel. We may as well deal with this now. Angels are a new concept in Dark Souls, as is a Heaven for that matter. They are both real-world religious concepts, that have appeared in various forms and guises throughout different religions and time periods. Gods in Dark Souls are usually those who possess powerful souls. That's my opinion. Obviously Gwyn and his ilk were the first of these, after the Age of Ancients and the advent of fire. A heaven and heavenly angels certainly are something apart from this, and a very different concept in the Dark Souls world. However, we don't actually physically see any in-game, and therefore they could be another form of powerful being. Or they truly could be heavenly, and there is a heaven. Or they could be an abstract concept imagined by Gertrude. However, I believe there certainly is something real to the angels. When you consider the power of their miracle, and the fact that certain winged knights do seem to have wings bestowed upon them. Anyway, if we return to the miracle, we see that after Gertrude was visited by an angel, she became blind and mute. She then recorded these tales in a scroll, and these scrolls would become the foundation or holy texts of the angelic faith. But ordinary men cannot understand it, or how it founded this religion. But one must ask how the faith was passed on to those who practiced the religion. If Gertrude became mute and her scroll was indecipherable, how did this become the foundation for a religion? Well, it could be that the power of this tale or miracle alone was enough for the religion to be passed down, for when recounted, it displays incredible power, and indeed we will later look at the winged knights who use this power. Regular miracles are said to recount the tales of the gods. This scroll is very different and unique. Its tale is indecipherable, and yet it still displays true power. Returning to Gertrude, one way or the other, we know that her encounter with an angel and her recounting of this tale formed the foundation of the angelic faith. We get clear indicators that this religion was not well received by the authorities. Not least of all, part of the description we get from the winged knight set or winged knight. We will look at them in some detail soon. However, for now, part of their description 
of their armour set states, Armour of the winged knights who swore themselves to the angels. Worship of the divine messengers was viewed as heresy in Lothric and unrecognised by any of the three pillars of rule. This is believed to be why Gertrude, the heavenly daughter, was imprisoned in the lofty cell of the Grand Archive. The three pillars of Lothric include the knight, the scholar, and the high priestess. None of these bodies recognised this religion as such, and in fact went so far as to view it as heresy. When a religion is named heretical, traditionally by one religious body or an authority, then the practitioners are persecuted and all traces of the religion is purged. This might explain why we find a hunter's ring on the roof of the Grand Archives, near where Gertrude is held and near where the winged knights are. The hunter's ring tells us, The hunters serve Lothric on the fringes and in the shadows. For generations, rulers of Lothric have relied especially upon the Black Hand hunters to punish enemies in ways that the King's Three Pillars cannot. It could be that the hunters were the first response by the Three Pillars to wipe out this religion, lurking in the shadows, possibly assassinating their lead members. Again, I must emphasise this is found near Gertrude's cell, but anything else to be said on this would be speculation. If we return to the Winged Knight armour set, the description gives us evidence that Gertrude was the central figure of the religion, and it gives us evidence that it was punished and purged, for she was imprisoned in the high cell of the Grand Archives, and indeed we can find this cell high above the archives. However, it seems she died here, for there is a corpse, surrounded by feathers, and her miracle is found in her body. Perhaps she was recounting her visit by the angel during her lengthy imprisonment. The presence of her miracle suggests that it is her body. But why are there feathers? Well, there are a few explanations. She was once again visited by an angel before she died. This could be the most obvious one. And this might explain why the top of her cage is open. The second explanation is that the three winged knights on the roof of the archives, who do possess feathered wings, attempted to rescue Gertrude. Or did they try to kill her? to end her suffering? Or are they simply guarding her body? All these seem fairly plausible, but feel free to disagree. But it is fairly possible that the feathers left behind in her cage were left by these winged knights. However, there is another theory I'd like to postulate, and this is the one I kind of like the most, even if it's not the most plausible. She herself, after her initial visit by the angel, took on an angelic appearance. We meet knights who have been blessed with angelic wings, so why not Gertrude, who was actually visited by an angel? In addition, she is kept in a cage which is very reminiscent of a bird cage, and this might explain the presence of the feathers. Either way, she is now dead, and she is free from the experimentation of the scholars. For the Grand Archives are the domain of the pillar known as the Scholar. The Scholar Ring states, a ring engraved with a portrait of a scholar. In Lothric, the scholar has long been considered one of the three pillars of the king's rule, and is therefore master of the Grand Archives. These scholars clearly watched over the archives, and thus were the ones responsible for watching over Gertrude. But why? Well, we can gain evidence of why from the crystal chime, for its description states, A sacred chime, once the possession of Gertrude, the heavenly daughter, and defiled by the scholars of the Grand Archives. The power of crystals granted the scholars a degree of success. In this case, their work enabled this chime to be suitable for casting both miracles and sorceries. This chime was once one of Gertrude's personal possessions, and it has since been defiled by the scholars. This implies they were experimenting on the chime, and eventually they use crystals to alter it, which is no surprise, considering we know from the soul of a crystal sage that the crystal sages acted as spiritual guides to the scholars, and no doubt influenced them. 
We can therefore see that the scholars, as one of the pillars, did not just imprison Gertrude, they also investigated and experimented on her, to the extent that they defiled her chine, which obviously means they perverted its original purpose and look. This tells us something very important. Not only did they imprison Gertrude because of the potential threat her theology could pose to the establishment, but clearly because they recognised the power she had uncovered. If this was not the case, they simply would have executed or imprisoned her. Instead, however, it seems that they have been given to the scholars so that they can study her. This suggests that Gertrude's visit by an angel has some truth to it. Despite her imprisonment, her angelic vision is shared with others and becomes the foundation of the angelic faith of Lothric. We know that this faith inspired some so much that they took up arms in the name of the angels. These warriors were called the Winged Knights, a militant religious order. Their armour states that they swore themselves to the angels and clearly took up arms in their name. These are dangerous combatants. The description of their halberd state, Halberd, wielded by the Winged Knights, who swore themselves to the angels. The thick, heavy, blood-stained blade can only be swung by one with inhuman strength. We can therefore see from this description that these knights had inhuman strength, and they could also use Gertrude's miracle at will, as we see in-game. In addition, we see that some winged knights have been blessed with real wings. There are a group of elite knights who are actual knights with wings. Their placement here cannot be seen as coincidence, but I'll cover this again in a minute. I will now explain my theory as to how this enigmatic religion essentially led to open conflict between these winged knights and the knights of Lothric. I will review certain lore points I have glossed over, as well as environmental details. We know that the pillars of Lothric had declared it heresy. The scholar was given control over Gertrude, and the high priestess obviously would have found this at odds with the religion main of Lothric and the knight, as the strong arm of authority, would have clashed with the Order of Winged Knights, and I will highlight some details that have led me to believe this. Firstly, from a gameplay point of view, we never see the Winged Knights fighting alongside the Lothric Knights. A fairly basic one, but one that highlights the fact they were not allies. Secondly, in Lothric Castle, we can find a room which is watched over by a winged knight. Once we have defeated this knight, we can climb a ladder and find a secret room. In this room, there is a painting of a winged knight and a set of winged knight equipment. This to me suggests a secret hideout for a force who is fighting against the established law and order of Lothric. We find three winged knights atop the grand archives of Lothric. These winged knights are actually blessed with angelic wings, and this makes them fearsome combatants. This once again lends credence to the belief of this heretical religion. As I mentioned before, their positioning is significant, for it is above Gertrude's holding cell. Across the way from these knights is Lothric Castle's throne room, but over the bridge leading to the throne room are numerous worn barricades manned by soldiers led by a significant amount of knights. Who are these defending against? In addition, we find barricades like this all throughout Lothric Castle. A few next to the Angelic Hideout indeed. So who are they defending against? I believe the answer comes fairly early on in the game, at the high wall of Lothric itself. As we descend down a ladder into the courtyards before Lothric Castle, we find many bodies of knights all whom look they have been killed in battle. Amongst these bodies, we find one of a winged knight. His corpse is riddled with swords and wounds as he reaches for his halberd. This again shows how powerful these knights were. It meant it took to kill even one of these, for we see the corpses of many Lothric knights surrounding him. In the courtyard with the fountain, we find a winged knight alive, surrounded by dead knights of Lothric. 
To me, all these environmental factors suggest that the Winged Knights were in conflict with the forces of Lothric. We know they were considered heretical, but nonetheless they were sworn to the angels, an act which would have made them fanatical and sworn enemies to the Knights of Lothric. There are signs of battle throughout Lothric, and I initially assumed that this was just another city that was falling or had fallen to the undead curse. However, I now believe that there was civil discord in Lothric, between the three pillars of rule and those of the angelic faith. The establishment feared the knights enough that they set up barricades outside and in the castle. For we look at the body count surrounding the one dead knight, we know they were nothing to be taken lightly. They possessed inhuman strength and could wield the miracles of angels, which was an extremely deadly combination. Indeed, some elite winged knights were even gifted wings. This not only lends credence to their beliefs, it also makes them extremely versatile and unusual warriors, ones that would no doubt have piled up a high body rate for the Knights of Lothric. I think that the forces of this religion struck out from secret bases at the establishment of Lothric, forcing the knights on the defensive. They were no doubt pushed to do so by being forced underground, as the pillars no doubt punished these heretics much as they did Gertrude. They will no doubt have done this because they have seen Gertrude's beliefs and religion as a potent alternative to their established order. In addition, they clearly believed there was power to Gertrude's teachings, as evidenced by the scholars' experimentation. But what are the angels? Sadly, I don't have anything on these, but perhaps it is better this way. To me, the angels seem to be a concept beyond the traditional Dark Souls lore, and it allows us to use our imagination. What we can see, however, is that these angels captured the faith of many in Lothric, enough to shake its very foundations to the core, resulting in civil conflict. So thanks for that guys, uh, I'm aware there's a lot of speculation in that, mainly because there's not a lot of information, but I can feel you can tease out a lot if you combine the lore with what in the items with what you see in the environment. I think it's a fairly plausible explanation as to why there are barricades everywhere, and why there are dead soldiers, and it certainly makes for an interesting story. However, that being said, please feel free to disagree. But I hope you enjoyed this video, even if you agreed or not, and please stick around because there'll be more coming. Thank you all for watching. Thank you.